Something I'm actually quite embarrassed about. Long overdue for this car. Thorough cleaning. New shiny bits. I can't believe how well that's come out. going on guys now i know a lot of you are really excited for the big mods i've got to come on this car in 2022 but for today i've got a tidying up job that's been long overdue for this car it's something i'm actually quite embarrassed about and when people ask if they can see it i have to say no i got stopped in town earlier by some lads who wanted to look around the car but there was one part that i just couldn't show them and that is under the bonnet and i've been asked at some of the shows i've been to if people can see the engine bay and it's just something that i haven't wanted to show people because I've just never cleaned it. I've never really looked after it. I've never done any sort of work under here apart from, you know, fitting the odd part like the air filter. And yeah, okay, so we changed the power steering fluid reservoir location from over here by the pump to over here by the battery. But other than those two things, really, I haven't done an awful lot under here. And I certainly haven't been keeping on top of maintenance under the bonnet. But today that is going to change. Not only am I going to do a full clean under here, but I've also got a couple of little dress up parts to make this engine bay look a little bit nicer. But before we can add any new shiny bits, we need to get this engine bay clean. And there's a couple of steps to really give this engine bay a thorough cleaning. If you guys are no strangers to working on your own cars, then I'm sure you've seen or at least heard of Chris Fix. He does some amazing videos on not only repairing cars, but also some really good cleaning videos as well. So I'm going to follow his how to super clean your engine bay guide. I'm not going to do absolutely everything that he does in that video, but I highly suggest you go and check that out if you want to do this yourself. This isn't going to be like a how to properly clean your engine bay or anything like that, but I just think some of the tips and things that he does in that video are really good and they're going to be really useful for what I'm trying to do with this engine. So we're going to follow as much as we can from that video and hopefully get this engine bay looking spot on. Now it's really tempting to just go straight in with some degreaser or some soapy water, but a lot of this stuff is actually just like surface, almost like a dusty kind of stuff that you can just rub off. So before we get any chemicals or any sort of cleaners involved, we're gonna do a dry clean. I've got a range of different types of brushes that we can use to agitate the dirt. And then once we've loosened that dirt, we can come in with a vacuum cleaner and just suck all the loose stuff away. So I'm gonna crack on with the dry clean and then I'll show you what it's looking like before we move on to the next step. Okay, so I just got done with the dry clean and it's already looking so much better. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over the whole end of the bay with these wonder wipes. These have got multiple uses, but the one thing I'm interested in is the oil and grease to try and get all those little bits that didn't come off with the vacuum and the brushes. After just going over the engine bay with those wipes, I can't believe how good it's looking, but we're not done yet. So next we're gonna move on to a wet clean and seeing as we're gonna be getting water in here, I'm gonna remove the battery. After I removed the battery, I realized just how grotty the inside of the battery tray was. So I decided to completely remove the tray, give it a thorough clean and also clean up that metal band that runs through the bottom, the posts that hold the battery tie down and also the bolts that bolt the tray to the car. Then I gave the battery tray itself a thorough clean just with some DG certain and some water. While this was drying, it gave me a chance to do the first little piece of dress up I had planned for this engine, and that was just some braided sleeving to go over the lines for the power steering fluid. I sucked as much fluid as I could out of the reservoir, removed the lines from the bottom, and then just slid on the braided sleeving as far as I needed, cut the ends, and then I just used some electrical tape around the ends to try and stop the ends of that braided sleeving from fraying. Okay, so we're ready to wet clean the engine bay, and the first place I'm going to clean is something that a lot of people overlook, and that's underneath the bonnet. But before I go ahead and clean that, I'm just going to cover up the main part of the engine and any like sensitive electrical bits or exposed electrical terminals like these battery terminals and things like that, just to try and stop too much water getting on things like that because it's just going to be a nightmare to dry off later. So I'm just going to cover up the main part of the engine with a large plastic bag. I've completely removed the air filter as well because I don't really want water getting all over that. I'm going to put some little Ziploc bags 
over these battery terminals just to, again to try and protect those as much as I can. And then a couple of larger plastic bags over the battery distribution block. I'm also going to try and get one just over the top of the ECU. Okay, so that's the main part of the engine and any of the little sensitive electrical bits that I was kind of worried about all covered up. One last thing just to make sure you do before you're going to do this, if you're going to get any sort of water in your engine bay, make sure all your caps and stuff are nice and tight and secured. And obviously if your dipstick's exposed, make sure that's pushed in all the way because the last thing you want to do is get water in any of those places. So now the next thing to do is we're going to spray down the underside of the bonnet with some degreaser. Okay, so I'm just going to give this a couple of minutes to sit and then I'm going to agitate all that dirt with one of these brushes and then we can hose this down. And then I'm just going to come in with the microfiber towel and just dry that off as best I can. And you know what, considering how dirty underneath the bonnet must get, I'm actually super impressed with how little dirt there actually is on this microfiber. I expected this thing to be absolutely caked in it yes it is dirty but considering we've just done a really quick degrease and rub down of that underside of the bonnet with a brush i think that's come out really well and i'm not sure if it will come across on camera but like i can tell the difference like in person of just how much cleaner it looks under here like it didn't look bad before it almost just looked like i don't know like a dusty black color but now it's like super shiny so that's definitely an awesome step that is really annoying me so we're gonna have to sort that out i'll probably remove that panel and paint it like i've seen other mark six youtubers like drive with andy that frozen fairs they've cleaned up these bits and they've also got little shiny bits to go over the top of them and things like that but we'll get onto that a little bit later in the video so just look how good that's looking right let's move on to the lower parts of this engine so we're going to do the same sort of thing on the side down here same on that side and probably across the back a bit if we can maybe get some of these bottles involved get some degreaser on those all across the front here as you can see i reattached this bottle had a bit of a nightmare with that so i put that all back together off camera i spilt some of the fluid it went all over the tray down here and everything so i'm going to give that a good clean as well and then we can start making this engine bay look a little bit more bleak. So same process as the bonnet, spray down with degreaser, agitate with a brush, hose down and then dry with a microfiber towel. I then did the same for the passenger side. And finally, the front slam panel as well. There we go. And I mean, look how clean this microfiber is. Like we must have got so much dirt and grease off this engine. Like it's just looking so clean. So that is awesome. Our engine bait is really starting to get there now. So the next step, I still need to clean down the main part of the engine, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove this plastic bag, being careful not to tip any of that water that it was holding onto the top of the engine. So let's just whip that out. And although the main part of the engine is looking really clean, we can still do a little bit better, I think. I'm not going to get any water in here, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray this down with some degreaser and then I'm just going to wipe it off with a microfiber towel and hopefully we can really get the top of this engine popping. Okay, so the engine bay clean is pretty much done. I'm just waiting for everything to fully dry before we go ahead and throw a layer of protection on all the bits that we've cleaned. But while I'm waiting for everything to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and install these. So this is a dress up washer kit from City UK. Link will be in the description. And this is a nut and washer kit from Scott Pope. I'll leave his Instagram on screen and these are to bling up the shock towers and the battery tray when that goes in. So if you wanna get either of those for yourself, like I said, link in the description and Scott's Instagram. This kit also comes with these rubber bungs to go on the top of the shock just to stop water getting in there, but I've already got those on mine, so I won't be needing those. But nevertheless, while I'm waiting for everything to dry, I'm gonna get these things installed. 
Okay, so there we go. I've got the washer kit on there and I've also got these nuts for the top of the struts. Now, while I was doing that, if you saw me spraying something on here, it's just a bit of WD-40 because I didn't want any moisture or anything like that on the threads underneath here because obviously this is totally sealed off now so nothing can get to the threads. So I didn't want water sitting in there. So I was just spraying that down, like I say, with a bit of WD-40. And they are looking awesome. I've actually got a couple of spare washers from the kit because I think you meant to use one for this bolt here and the same on this side, but they won't fit on mine because I've got these bolts that came with the MB Styling Bonnet struts. So they're no good. I'm thinking of probably using them down here. I think I've seen other people do this. Now these are larger bolts, so I'll have to see if I can bore out the red washers and just see maybe if I can get them a bit wider to fit those in there. Maybe, I'm not 100% sure. I think I'll probably get one around that one. So I might have a go at that in a little bit, but for now, I think it's time I started reassembling this car. So I'm gonna get the battery tray back in. And then I've also got this new battery tie down, which just replaces the old horrible one. I was thinking about just repainting the old one, but now we've got a nice chrome one on here and it's got a little clip on the back, hold this thing. So it's pretty much just a straight swap out for the old one. And then I can secure that with the rest of these washers and nuts that were in the kit from Scott. Now I have got a couple of other little bling bits like this to go on the rest of this engine, but it is starting to get dark. So I'm gonna to have to pick this up in the morning. But before I just leave it here for tonight, I've also got this, which I thought was some sort of battery cover, but it doesn't seem to go over that in any way. So I'm not really sure. I've seen the ones you get from, is it Blue Iguanas or something like that? I can't remember the Instagram name exactly. Again, Drive with Andy's got that one. Um, and it like similar shape to this, but it's got the ST thing there and it does look a lot nicer than this. You still use the original battery tie down with that. So maybe we'll change it up and go for something like that afterwards. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just really not sure where this goes. It's got like a sticky pad on the back from where it was used before, but I can't think where that actually went. Like, if anyone knows, if anyone has an idea where they think this goes, maybe it's not for this car, I really don't know. If anyone's got an idea, then please let me know. Okay, so it's the following day and everything is fully dry. So now it's time to add a little bit of shine and also some protection to all the bits that we clean. So for under the bonnet and all the other metal bits in the engine bay, I've just got some spray wax. This is just something that I had lying around in my shed. And then for all the hoses and plastics in the engine bay, I've got this. This is Silly Shine and I found this from watching Matt Armstrong. If you guys don't know Matt Armstrong then for starters why but just go check him out. I actually got this from his online store. It's specifically designed for silicon hoses but I've only got this one here but Matt uses it on all his engine bay plastics and all sorts of stuff like that and it comes out really well so I thought we'd give that a crack and support another YouTuber at the same time. Like I said that is from his online store if you wanted to pick some of that up for yourself working on one side at a time. I sprayed the wax onto all the exposed metal surfaces and then just worked this in with a little applicator pad. Then after a quick buff, all the metal surfaces were protected and then I could move on to the plastics. Now this is where the Silly Shine really comes into its own. There's no weird application techniques, no need to buff it off afterwards or anything like that. You literally just spray it onto the surfaces that you want to protect and make shiny and it just works. Do get any excess you can just wipe this off with the microfiber towel. Oh and I nearly forgot the slam panel. And that 
is just looking so good now. Like I can't believe how well that's come out compared to what it was like before. That Silly Shine stuff is amazing. It's actually two days later that I'm showing you this, like since I did that coating on it, and it still looks like this plastic's wet, but like that is bone dry and it looks so good. I'm so impressed with that product. Like I said, go and check out Matt Armstrong's store if you want to get some of that for yourself because like that stuff is just unreal. I've also got a couple more chrome pieces to go on, so let's get those fitted. Okay, so guys, first impression on the chrome covers. If I'm honest, my personal opinion is that I'm not really that much of a fan of them. I wasn't totally sure when I actually bought them. They just came up on Facebook and I thought, you know what, I'll give them a go. But I think straight off the bat, like I'm, I'm just really not digging them. I mean, it's pretty cool. Like this is a whole cover that just goes over that cap. Like, and it's, you know, it's weighty. Like it's all good quality stuff. I think that is the brand of it there. So yeah, that's where they've come from. I assume it's all from the same place, but uh, yeah, like I said, they just popped up on Facebook. I thought I'd give them a go, but first impressions for me are that I'm probably not gonna stick with these. I have actually ordered another engine cover, a different one to this that I'm keen to try out. I think that one will look a lot nicer and be more like the look that I'm going for. But still, I'd like to hear from you guys in the comments what you think of these chrome pieces. Because, like I said, I'm not 100% decided, but for me, I don't really think I like them. I guess another reason I went for them when they popped up is I just wanted to do something a little bit different to what other people do. Like, I know a lot of people go for the, is it Paint Mods uh, cover for this tank? And if you've got the power steering one, they do one for that as well. Um, I think they do a battery cover and things like that. Like, I've seen quite a lot of that stuff on Driving Andy's channel. Like, he has this in gloss black and a couple of the other covers as well. I think it looks really good. And I do kind of want to go down the same sort of route, but I did want to try and do something a little bit different. But for me... I just don't think this chrome is it. But nevertheless, let me know what you guys think of these chrome pieces in the comments. And like I said, I have got a couple of other bits ordered that are coming that I want to try out and just see if they're any better. So maybe you just like one thing. Maybe you just like the engine cover or just like the coolant tank cover. So just let me know if you think there's any bits we should keep. Keep all of it, get rid of all of it and get something different. Just let me know and we'll see where we go with that. I think I mentioned earlier in the video that is a nicer chrome piece for this. Again, Drive with Andy has that. There's also a nice little chrome piece to go up here. And this is something that I really need to sort out. I will be doing that. I have actually ordered that chrome piece, but that hasn't come yet so i will be doing that shortly and also some of those red washers that i've got on the headlights i've got a spare set that were for the rear lights but i think i'm going to use them here because again i've seen that andy did and it looked really good with his gold and black theme so i think i'll do the same with the chrome cover i'll paint this like tidy this up and paint it use the washers on there and some new bolts and that should be getting that bit looking really nice Going back to the engine cover I mentioned, I think it'll also tie in with some other things that I've got coming for the engine bay very soon. If you were paying attention in my all my mods video that I did recently, you'll remember me saying this. Oh, and just quickly, this is probably the last time you're ever gonna see it on this car. But as you can see, it's still here for the time being. That's because I am waiting on something for there as well. And I think you guys, most of you have figured out what it is that's coming for there to replace that air filter. So keep your eyes peeled for that. I think what I'll do is just get a few more bits. I might get a replacement cover for this. I'll keep waiting on the piece for this turning up and do this bit, maybe get a new cover for this, try out the new engine cover, which I'm gonna be doing something hopefully pretty cool with. And then I've got, like I said, something else to go instead of this air filter. So I'll probably do all that in another video because there's still quite a bit to be getting on with there. And also I wanna wait and see what you guys actually think of these chrome pieces that we've got. But I think that is gonna do it for this video. I'm super happy with how clean the engine bay is looking now. Like it just looks so much better than it did before. I can't believe I waited so long to actually do that, but it's finally done and I feel so much better about it now. I can actually show my engine bay to people when they ask to see it. I'm also really happy with all the little dress up bits like the red washers, these caps for the strut towers and all that sort of stuff. Like that stuff looks really good. Like I said, not 100% sold on the covers, but we'll get onto that in another video. So for this one, it is time to end. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.